Hi there and welcome. I just received a question on YouTube how to measure ripple on an oscilloscope and uh, I think that is an excellent uh, topic for a video. So in this video I'll be talking about the uh, power supply design because ripple is one of the unwanted byproducts when you do a power supply design. So typically to do a power supply you would have a 220 volts in or 110 for the US um, going through a transformer and uh, if we want 12 volt out uh, the transformer winding ratio would be something like 1 to 20 for Europe and uh, 1 to 9 uh, for the US. And uh, if we look at the output of the transformer like this, uh, 12 volt uh, AC transformer, it will basically look like this, uh, if you can excuse my terrible sine wave drawing skills. Uh, but the output should be a sine wave and the peak value should be uh, plus 18 and uh, minus 18. The reason the peak value is not 12 volt is that uh, this sine wave here with a peak value of uh, 18 uh, plus minus 18 will be able to uh, generate the same amount of uh, power as a DC power supply with a straight 12 volt uh, output. So uh, of course we don't want this sine wave on the output of our power supply. We want to run some electronics or some other circuit from this power supply. So what we want is in this case 18 volt. DC on the output or uh, 12 volt but if we want 12 volt we have to regulate it afterwards um, but I will talk about that later but the first thing that uh, we would think about would be uh, why don't we use a diode because diodes we can just uh, get current through one way so at least that should uh, get rid of some of this uh, negative voltage and uh, that's exactly what it does I have drawn the circuit here and uh, this is called a half wave rectifier and the reason it's called that is because once there's a positive voltage here, the diode of course will uh, conduct and we will have current going through and we will see the voltage here on the output. Uh, so yeah, this is the output. We out and this is what we're displaying here and uh, of course over time. So we will have these, uh, when the diode conducts, we will have voltage coming through. And uh, when the voltage is a negative polarity from the transformer, uh, we will not have anything because the diode will uh, block it. So we will get these uh, half waves, half of the sine wave, and uh, that's why it's called a half wave rectifier. Now we are almost there because uh, what we can do now is if we can store some energy between these pulses, we will have a nice uh, DC on the output. And uh, the way to store energy is uh, using a capacitor. And uh, I've drawn the circuit here, and as you see, the capacitor will charge up on the first uh, pulse from the diode. And uh, then the capacitor will keep the voltage across its terminals, uh, even when the pulse has died down. So basically it will just stay here and we have a very nice DC voltage. Now the problem we have here is that in this circuit, of course, we are not driving ele any electronics. Uh, we are just making a, a nice DC supply. But of course we want to run some electronics, we want to have a load and uh, I have drawn this load as a resistor but it could just as well be a LCD display or a computer or a microcontroller or whatever, anything that requires DC to run. So uh, what happens here is that we will of course charge the capacitor during this uh, uh, the first uh, pulse, the first wave, and uh, then the load will, will use some current. And it can't get current from the transformer, it has to get current from the uh, capacitor. So the voltage on the capacitor will start dropping uh, slowly. Then we have another pulse uh, from the diode, it will charge again, and then it will discharge slowly. And that is what we call the ripple. The ripple is the noise on top of the DC, so to speak. The ripple is the maximum and the minimum value of this uh, uh, voltage drop on the capacitor. Now, we have some conditions that must be met for this to work. Uh, of course, the capacitor has to be large enough. We cannot accept that this uh, ripple noise or the voltage across the capacitor uh, goes down to zero. Then we have no power supply at all. So if the load is too big or if the capacitor is too small, uh, we will have a terrible ripple on this uh, output signal. Uh, another thing we need as a condition is that the transformer must be large enough. If the transformer cannot uh, charge the capacitor during this period here, 
um, then we have a problem. Also, we see the bigger the capacitor, uh, the less ripple we will have. Now, large capacitors are expensive. So, uh, someone came up with a clever idea here, and uh, that is called the full wave rectifier. And uh, using that, we use four diodes instead of one, and uh, then we have positive uh, voltage running through there. And when this point here is more positive than that one, that means when, when we have the negative, uh, when we have the negative part of the sine wave, then the other diode will conduct. So basically, what we have is uh, all the waveforms go through, and uh, that is called the full wave rectifier or the rectifier bridge. This is called the rectifier bridge. So of course, uh, with the rectifier bridge like this, we will charge the capacitor twice as often. Um, if we compare these pulses to these here, we will have additional pulse here from the negative period on the transformer. Of course, you're also charging the capacitor twice as often. So the ripple noise will have a frequency that is uh, double that of the line frequency. So if you have 50 Hz in Europe, your ripple will now be uh, 100 Hz. And in the US, you will have uh, 120 Hz ripple here. So the question is probably how large should my capacitor be? And uh, a good typical value is 4700 microfarads for a full wave rectifier. You can go lower if you uh, use a voltage regulator on the output, but I think this is a good starting value. And then now we get to how to measure ripple, because typically, uh, like in our case, we have 18 volts output from our uh, across our capacitor. And uh, when we draw a current, we have these little uh, ripples here. So it can be very difficult to uh, measure. Because you're basically measuring something like maybe uh, 0.2 volts on an 18 volt uh, scale on your oscilloscope. So basically what we have to do is, uh, if we can subtract the 18 volts, the ripple will be moved down to around here. And then we can amplify the signal and we will see the ripple. Something like that. And uh, this is very easy to do, really, on an oscilloscope. And I will show it on uh, two of my oscilloscopes. I have a very old analog oscilloscope. And uh, I think it's maybe 30 years old. And uh, even back then you can do this very easily. Okay, so what I have here is a little load that I made and it's basically just consisting of some resistors in parallel. I could have used one big power resistor, but I didn't have that. So I just put some quarter watt resistors in parallel and uh, that is uh, equivalent. And then I have this little power supply and as you can see, this is 220 volts in and it has DC out 100 milliamp. And uh, after we plug that in, uh, we will take a look at the oscilloscope and see whether we can find any ripple and also see how we can measure it. So uh, let me just plug it in and uh, then we will uh, get started. Okay, and uh, now my oscilloscope is switched on. As you can see, this is an old analog scope from uh, about 35 years ago. And uh, it's flickering a little bit because of uh, the camera and the update rate of the scope and what have you. But uh, I think it's good enough for our purpose here. And I hope you can uh, see what's happening. Now on this oscilloscope, it has an input selector here that shows AC, uh, ground and DC. And uh, right now it's ground. And uh, you can see my amplitude per division, it says 0.5 volts per division. But my probe is set to 10 times. So we actually have 5 volts per division. Uh, so if we look at the screen itself, we have 5 volt here, 10 volt, 15, 20, 25, so on and so forth. So um, if I switch the input to DC, which is uh, the normal mode, you can see that the trace is uh, jumping up from here to here, which is 5, 10, 15, 18 volts. So uh, that uh, follows the theory very nicely. You may also be able to see that the line is jumping up or down a little bit. And of course, that is uh, the ripple that we want to measure. Now, as I said, uh, the easy part is to actually uh, remove the DC remove that uh, big jump here. 
and it's really really simple you just change the input mode from DC to AC and uh, as you can see it's still uh, moving up and down a little bit but now it's moving up and down around the zero and uh, I can move the zero up like that with this uh, little uh, knob up here and uh, then I can increase the gain and uh, basically there you have it that is our ripple and uh, there is no of course cursor or anything for measuring stuff here but we can count uh, we can count um, divisions here and there's roughly one division and uh, we have uh, 0.5 here we have 50 milli volts so we have about half a volt peak to peak uh, showing here so uh, that is our ripple using this circuit and as I promised we will do the same on a digital oscilloscope because uh, that is a little bit more tricky uh, most of the time the DC AC input selector is uh, done in software okay I'm back and we now have the same on my digital storage scope and uh, basically this is zero down here and I have five volts per division of course in a digital storage scope you can key in uh, your multiplier gain in your probe and I already set up this scope for 10 times probe but let's uh, plug in the signal here and uh, we see the line jump up just like on the analog scope and we have 5, 10, 15, 18 volts um, on the signal here and again you can see it's a little bit unstable it's kind of a uh, uh, jumping up and down so that is uh, indeed the ripple now on this oscilloscope um, you have to find the AC DC selector in the channel 1 uh, menu channel 1 and uh, what can we find there there we go uh, it says DC we can now change it to AC and you can see as soon as I did that uh, the 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 trace moved down and again I have a knob in this case it's here I uh, do we have it there and then I can move the signal up again uh, and then we can use this thing to a amplify so I'm moving it down and uh, there we have it I said on my uh, analog scope we had about uh, 0.4 was it 0.5 volts uh, ripple and uh, we can do the same here we can measure of course uh, we can measure of course division so we have about two divisions which is uh, 400 millivolts uh, some scopes like this one I think it can also measure uh, volts peak to peak and uh, immediately it does that it says 430 millivolts uh, so that is our ripple here Another way on a digital storage scope is uh, to use cursors and where do we have those uh, mode here mode manual cursor and then we can move them up and down and we can put one cursor here at the top and uh, we can move the other cursor up. And uh, we have again about 412 millivolt uh, peak to peak. So yeah, uh, basically to measure anything uh, that is buried, so to speak, in DC, you simply just change the input to AC and the DC will disappear. And then you can scale up and down the AC part of your signal, just like I did here. Of course, if I change back, now I have 200 millivolts per division. If I change back, uh, to DC the 18 volts will be off screen it will um, overshoot the screen you can see it immediately just BAM it hits, hits the top of here this 12 volt adapter that I have here this little thing here of course it says 12 volts but actually the output as we saw is 18 volts so uh, if we have to regulate it down to exact 12 volts uh, we will use a voltage regulator and uh, if there's interest, I will do a video about voltage regulators. Otherwise, to uh, Shirina who asked this question, and uh, all the people who are watching, thank you for watching, and uh, see you again soon.